Coming to you from deep inside the bowels of a great big empty. Get ready for another episode of The Home Defense Show with Skip Coriel. Hello, American families. Welcome back to this week's episode of The Home Defense Show. I'm your host, Skip Coriel. And if you love your family, care about them deeply, and want to learn how to protect them in every facet of your life, and you've come to the right place. We've got a great show for you today, and I know you're going to love it. Folks, I am uh, here on the West Coast. That's right. You heard me correctly. I am on the West Coast. I'm no longer in flyover country, uh, conservative America. I'm not in the Midwest. I'm not in Michigan. I am in Oregon, right there on the coast. That's kind of like the spillover for people who fall out of uh, California. And I got to tell you, this is a, a whole new place. Uh, we're on family vacation. Uh, my wife, Sarah, she is from Newport, Oregon, right on the coast. I'm in my mobile defense command post right now, trying to make everything sound like I'm in my broadcast studio back home. Not sure how well that's working. But right here from inside my Honda Odyssey minivan, I'm looking at the Pacific Ocean. Actually, it's Yaquina Bay, and it's what they call the mud flats. When the tide is out, it's nothing but mud. When the tide is in, it looks like the ocean. So that's where I'm at right now in my in-laws driveway broadcasting to you from deep inside the bowels of a very, very blue state. I have to tell you this. I have been disarmed by the state of Oregon for my own protection. I don't have my gun. It's not on my hip. It's a really weird, bizarre feeling. I have been reduced to pepper spray. When I got here, one of the first things I did was I did a Google search on Newport gun stores. And I found one close by in a little town called Toledo, STS Arms. So I drive over there to STS Arms. I drive up to the driveway, and there are surveillance cameras everywhere. There is security fencing up. There's a big, large sign that says, no trespassing, violators will be prosecuted, and a big, huge junkyard dog looking at me, daring me to get out of my vehicle, and I thought, now, this is a really odd way to treat your customers who are coming to buy guns. And it didn't really look like a gun store. It, it kind of looked like like an old shack, an old trailer um, with a pole barn out back. And I thought, you know, maybe I better not get out of my vehicle. So I'm in the driveway, and I, I pulled up the Internet, and I went to their website. And STS Arms is not a gun store. It's not a retail gun store. It looks like they build AR-15s. They manufacture them. So they've got a machine shop there, and they do not want the public there. So I just backed on out of there, and I still haven't found a gun store here. guess it's not very politically correct. But I have found a lot of homeless people. One of the really bizarre things about this West Coast is, I don't know, it seems like every every tenth person is homeless and boy you know right away who they are they're wearing a certain type of clothing they've got a backpack um, they're unshaven and they just walk around like zombies um, just kind of bizarre they're covered in pat tattoos and piercings and all kinds of stuff and we have homeless people in Michigan but not near the amount of homeless people here I think they're government subsidized. It's almost like they want more homeless people. I don't know why, but, you know, they feed them, they clothe them. I was in a church yesterday uh, waiting for my wife, who was doing a homeschooling thing there. And this guy walked through the front door, and he looked really rough. Had a backpack, wearing weatherproof gear, because it rains every single day here. It's raining right now. Maybe you can hear the the raindrops on my minivan. But it rains every day in Newport, whether it needs it or not. It just keeps right on a raining. And this guy walks in. He stops and he looks at me. And I'm checking him out. He's checking me out. And he said, he said, where's the food pantry? 
And I said, well, I, I don't know. Uh, check the church office. It's right over there. So he went over there, and he got some food, and he left. I'm not used to that. I do not understand homeless people. You know, I, I know that there is a, a large amount of them. A, a greater percentage of homeless people are mentally ill and addicted to drugs and alcohol than the general public. And perhaps that, maybe that's why they're homeless. I don't know. But a part of me suspects that a lot of these people are homeless because they want to be homeless. Because there are jobs all over the place. I mean, granted, they're not, you know, $100,000 a year jobs. But, you know, they're like minimum wage jobs. Or, but they're jobs. If I didn't have a job, I didn't have a home, first thing I do is get a job. And then I could find a place to rent or whatever, maybe just a room. It's like these people don't have any self-respect. And they, they have this feeling of entitlement. I, I just do not understand that. And maybe it's best that I don't understand it. Because if I understood it, maybe I'd be like them. And I don't want that. But anyways, that's what's going on in my life. I'll be here for another 10 days or so. And then I'll head back to the, the Midwest and start hunting Bambi again. And I can't wait to get over the Oregon state line into Idaho so I can rearm myself and become a sovereign, free United States citizen one more time. Now, having said all that, got that out of the way, let's go ahead and let's get to the news. All right, here's something from, oh, caliberpress.com. That's one of the law enforcement sites that I go to. Here's, here's the headline. Officer shoots at actor holding prop gun. <laughs> Responding to a robbery in progress, police had no idea it was a movie set. Oh, this should be good. Officers arrived just in time to stop a mass gunman trying to flee from the bar he'd just robbed. Drop the gun! Drop the gun now! The police officer yells. The man turned toward the police and an officer fired a shot that missed hitting the man wearing a ski mask. Boy, talk about a lucky actor. Uh, normally the cops don't shoot one round. They shoot until the threat stops. Jim Duff, an actor, dropped the fake gun and pulled off the mask while telling the officers, This is a movie set. The entire scene, which took place in Crawfordsville, Indiana, was caught on the officer's body cam, released by Indiana State Police. It's unknown what movie was being filmed, but no one was hurt on the scene. Boy, I gotta tell you, that man, that actor was so lucky that the officer missed and that he stopped shooting. Quite frankly, that was probably a, a tactical mistake on his part. When you see a, a masked man with a gun and the gun is pointed at you, you shoot to stop the threat. You fire for effect. He, he fired one round and then he stopped. In this case, I'm glad that he did, but boy, next time it might be a real robber with a real gun. You know, I, I'm, I'm reading through this article. The movie producers did not notify law enforcement or anyone in the city that they were making this film, which is a really stupid thing to do. Well, it almost got one of their actors killed. Next time, they'll notify the police before they start filming. All right, what else do we have here? Okay, boy, you guys have been following the Las Vegas shooter, probably. He used a bump fire stock. And it's a big controversy right now. Should they be banned? Should they not be banned? Do they need more regulation? Even the NRA is coming out and saying, well, maybe they need to be regulated. I've been doing some research on this. Uh, here's an article here. Cabela's comments on removal of bump fire stocks from its inventory. This is from BearingArms.com. So... Cabela's is not going to be selling bump fire stocks anymore. Following the horrible events of Las Vegas on October 1, people were looking for answers. It didn't take long to learn that the killer used bump fire stocks to create so much havoc at a peaceful music festival. It also didn't take long for people to notice that sporting retailer Cabela's was no longer selling the stocks. The company issued a statement. On Tuesday, October 3, Cabela's initiated the process of discontinuing the sale of these devices at all retail locations and online. We agree with the National Rifle Association and others that the sale of such devices should be subject to additional regulation. 
The bump stocks were no longer available on the company's website as of Wednesday with an error message redirecting customers to different products. So it looks like they're using the NRA for cover, but this, this is no surprise here. It is now politically incorrect um, to have a bump fire stock as it is a gun, but it's bad public relations to, to sell something that someone used to kill 59 people or so. I did some research on bump fire stocks, and you go on YouTube and just do a search on bump fire using a rubber band, and you'll you'll watch people. They take a, a just an ordinary rubber band, and they'll attach it to a gun in a way that allows them to mimic full automatic fire. It's amazing. Another guy used his belt loop to mimic automatic fire. So getting rid of the bump stocks isn't going to get rid of bump fire. It's just going to get rid of the bump, the bump stocks. Probably won't be as safe as it was before. Regardless, boy, when I research bump fire, or really any, any type of uh, full auto, anytime you are firing full automatic, your accuracy is greatly diminished. For that reason, I really don't have a use for automatic fire. I mean, other than just to go out and do it for fun. But let's face it, firing a machine gun is fun, okay? Admit it. Even though it's politically incorrect and it's being demonized right now, machine guns are fun. They're, they're loads of fun. Heck, I joined the Marine Corps just to, just to shoot, a, shoot a machine gun for fun. But, hey, maybe that's just me. Well, hey, I might get some, uh, some nasty emails on that, but that's okay. We've got a wonderful show for you today. We have got... Uh, in segments two and three, we have author Doug Giles. Uh, last year, he did the he wrote the book Pussification: The Effeminization of the American Male, and we had him on for that. Now, just a few days ago, he released the book called My Grandpa's a Patriotic Badass. That's right, you you heard that correctly. My Grandpa's a Patriotic Badass. This Doug Giles, he is just hilarious. He's funny. He's witty. He is balls to the wall. Do not expect to hear anything politically correct from Doug Giles. He spoke at the Second Amendment March a few years back in a snowstorm. It just funny, funny guy. You're going to enjoy this. You will either hate him or you will love him. I guarantee you or your money back. Okay, we've got two minutes now. Uh, go ahead, take the break. Listen to our sponsors. They're great sponsors. And also go on out to Amazon.com and just do a search on My Grandpa's a Patriotic Badass. Last I checked, it was number two on Amazon uh, in grandparenting studies. So um, we will be back in a few minutes here with author Doug Giles. This is Skip Corilla on the Home Defense Show. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. Siege Coriel. Welcome to the Home Defense Show with my dad, Skip Coriel. Don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. This is Skip Coriel from the Home Defense Show, and I want you to have the very best handgun that money can buy. And that's why we recommend you visit Larry Jackson at Elite Firearms and Training. As a concealed carry instructor, I see people every week out on the range with guns they can't shoot properly because they didn't know what to buy. That will never happen at Elite Firearms and Training. Larry Jackson will personally fit you with your very own personal defense pistol. So call Larry Jackson today at 616-299-8715 or visit EliteFirearms.us. This is Colonel Danny Gillum. I host Front Lines of Freedom, a weekly syndicated military talk radio show. One of my co-hosts is Skip Coriel, the host of this show. We cover things that impact military and veteran communities, and we do it from the veteran's perspective. The show is broadcast across the nation and is also available as a podcast on our website, FrontlinesOfFreedom.com. Please join Skip and me weekly on Frontlines of Freedom. Okay, folks, welcome back to the Home Defense Show. This is your host, Skip Coriel. We are on the phone with a uh, really funny guy, a witty guy, and an intelligent guy. 
uh, one of my favorite conservatives. He is Doug Giles from Clash Radio. Doug, welcome to the Home Defense Show. Skip, how you doing, big dog? I am doing fantastic. I'm I'm here deep inside the bowels of the West Coast on vacation of all places. I'm in Newport, Oregon, and I'm looking out at the ocean right now. Um, i got to tell you, Doug, this whole West Coast place, it's just really, it's bizarre. It's, it's weird. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised that you're there and, uh, and you didn't burst into flames. <laughs> well, well, this is unusual for me because it's like I, I'm unarmed. I, I, legally, I've been legally disarmed. Uh, I can't walk around, you know, carrying a gun, which is real unusual for me. I'm, I'm like normally armed 24-7, but this is just bizarre. I've been reduced to pepper spray when we were bear hunting up in alaska uh, a couple of years ago um some of the eco tourists were coming through the copper river where we had exclusive rights to hunt uh, brown bears and grizzlies they were all getting out of the boat skip and they're milling around on the beach and i mean these are beaches that we're seeing you know 10 and 11 foot uh prehistoric brown bear toads that eat moose you know like they're tic tacs <laughs> yeah and uh, and we pull up to the boat and we and uh, th- my guide says, uh, do you guys have a firearm for protection? And um, they said no, but we've got uh, bear pepper spray. Mm-hmm. And uh, Wayne, who's a very quiet guy, he goes, oh okay, that's good. So we pulled away from him and stuff. And when we're about 15 yards away, he said, you know what, that's good for. And I said, what? And he goes, well, it'll it'll season their flesh when the bear blows through that cloud of pepper spray at 35 miles an hour to eat them. Yes. You know what you could have done, Doug? You could have used those people for, for bait, and you just got to lay it off them about 200 yards and waited for the bears to come. You know, that's a great idea. Just get behind some uh, devil's club or alders on the other side of the creek and just, just <laughs> wait for that big boar to come out and uh, have, a, have an afternoon snack. You know, just eco-bait, you could call it. You're going green. <laughs> All right. You know, what's interesting is um, uh, about the whole uh, going to places where you can't carry. I don't know if I'm getting lazy or paranoid or both, but, uh, Skip, I don't like going places at all uh, where I'm unarmed. Before we get too far into this interview, tell us about Clash Daily, because uh, I know you're the big dog there. Yeah, Clash Daily dot com it's uh it's a conservative libertarian mosh pit with breaking news edgy opinion and funny crap and um it's been in existence for five years and uh we've gotten 215 million page views now so not a bad start yeah um have you noticed a downturn since trump was elected or did that did that not affect you at all yeah after trump was elected uh the left didn't know what to do so they decided to put the thumb screws to conservative publishers i mean we're still we're still doing millions of page views a month and stuff, but it was nothing like uh, it was pre-election. And you know what? I hope Trump goes after them. You know, they, these social media platforms have way too much power. I think they ought to be hit with antitrust. I mean, you look at what Google does and YouTube does to conservative people. Facebook puts out standards that very few people, aside from liberals, can maintain. And they have sway of uh, a billion people. So it is a nightmare now for publishers but you know what? I feel called to this. I'm not going to be defeated. We're going to go, you know, onward through the fog. And like I said, we still, you know, got a pretty substantial reach. Yeah, balls of the prior, wall. Prior to the prior to the election, man, on our Facebook page, you know, we had 10 to 12 million uh, people per week engaged, and now it's uh, down to one to two. And that has zero to do with our content because our content is perfect. It's red hot. It's irrefutable. There's no fake stuff or clickbait or any kind of sensational type crap. It's just hard bore, hard knuckle uh, reporting of stuff that uh, the little snowflakes don't want to hear. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of it has to do with uh, people have a false sense of security right now. They figure, okay, Obama's out, Trump is in, he's going to take care of us, everything's fine. And that's kind of a snowflake attitude uh, way of thinking anyways. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's eternal vigilance. And uh, anytime you know we we lax up and we you know pull the pull the motor out of the water or the oar out of the water, then uh, just like everything, you start drifting in a direction you know you don't want to go. Yeah. And the only way that uh, you know we've got a four-year window, or actually a a three-year and two-month window, to make some substantial changes, and hopefully you know he gets reelected and we get another four-year window. But we're talking about uh, you know three to four decade-long 
systematic swamp abuse by uh, corrupt politicians on the right and the left. And uh, if we think, you know, it's now just sunshine and bluebirds and pixie dust because Trump got elected, uh, then we're stupid. And, yeah. and, you know, we're cutting off our nose to spite our face. So we gotta we got to constantly be on the offense. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, Doug, let's talk about uh, your new book, My Grandpa is a Patriotic Badass. <laughs> that title, when you came to me with that title, I just thought, yeah, that, that about sums it up. But uh, go ahead, take a few minutes, talk to us about, about your new book. Yeah, I was, uh, when we were moving to Texas from Miami, I was cleaning out uh, all my books and boxed them up and stuff and got a pretty substantial library in this quote book tumbled into my lap from like the mid 90s and I opened it up and it was kind of like uh, these warm wishes and quotes and witticism and maxims from this father to his son and uh, a lot of them are great a lot of them are sweet a lot of them channeled common sense to the young you know as a bread trail to uh, greatness and a life of substance and character But the thing that struck me like a a throwing star tossed by Jackie Chan was those days are gone in the soft peddling of virtues and character. Now we've got to up the the level of attitude to the next generation because just like we talked about before, a lot of the stuff that we cherish, that we appreciate here in the United States, it's going to evaporate like a pack of smokes at an AA meeting if we don't inject into the next generation – a ballsy attitude of, of fight uh, those people who dislike America because it's war, man, and the game is on. And so I decided to cobble together this compendium of, of my most viral quotes that have accounted for 215 million page views, and not just give them wisdom, some little witty, fun quotables, but also make sure that there's an underlying attitude injection to where they've got that scrappy fight for this grand American experiment in self-governance. Yeah, I I agree. Now's now's the time to get scrappy and to have that kind of attitude. Can't rest back on your laurels because we can look in Washington, D.C. right now and say, man, Donald Trump, he's got his hands full right now. I I think maybe he got more than he bargained for. That that whole place is just totally entrenched and working to defeat anything that that he wants to do. And, uh, you know, quite frankly... It's a really tough time right now, tougher than people think. Um, I want to go over a couple of your quotes here. I love this book. It is funnier than a rubber crutch. You know, and it's the format is set up is, my grandpa says, if women want to march, they should march over to his house and fix him a sandwich and get him a beer. (laughs) I thought, you know, that's going to piss some people off. (laughs) Where'd that one come from? Yeah, because, well, that's from the Nasty Women March when Trump got elected and Ashley Judd and Madonna, uh, you know, were trying to make hay out of their screeching vagina hat protests, uh, which I found hilarious because, um, especially in light of the Harvey Weinstein revelation, how he sexually molested uh, Ashley Judd, and she's making Trump out to be, you know, the Antichrist because he said, grab him by the you-know-what back in 2011 when – uh, I'll remind your listener, uh, he was a Democrat, and they said diddly squat about Trump's uh, playboy way. However, she, make, uh, she made Trump out to be this vicious villain, completely silent at that juncture about Harvey Weinstein's sex crimes. That's what spawned uh, that quote. These women are marching against uh, faux enemies. Trump's not against them. You look at the people that he's appointing in his cabinet, the Department of Homeland Security appointment today is also a female. It's not against women. He's pro-women. Look at all the women that has worked for him in, in Trump uh, uh, industry. So I thought I'd have a little fun at their expense and say, listen, ladies, if you want to march, march over to my house and get me a beer. The point being to my offspring and to my grandson and my granddaughter is that one of the best ways to take down some of these uh, faux ragers like Ashley Judd and Madonna is uh, to use humor. And I'm telling you what, man, we are close to the precipice to where you can't even make jokes anymore without you committing hate crimes. Yeah. And I'm not the only one who's saying that. I mean, Jerry Seinfeld is, Chris Rock, uh, Kevin Hart, a lot of these other uh, great comedians, Dennis Miller, Bill Burr. You ought to see the hell that cascades down on them uh, just from jokes. And, and uh, it's unbelievable, man. And that's why I wrote uh, My Grandpa's a Patriotic Badass. 
is that we've got to get young people to get a rebellious spirit and attitude. And com- comedy obviously figures into that greatly. Because, yeah. uh, again, these values, man, they are fragile. They can expire like a jug of milk mm-hmm. if, uh, if we don't raise the next generation to be uh, appropriately rebellious. And most parents, they try to curtail that rebellious streak in their kids when they should encourage it and point it at the right enemy. Yeah, and that's why Sarah and I homeschool our kids, cause, so we can do that for them. Doug, we're, we're about out of time on this segment, but when we come back, I want to talk a little bit about political correctness and, and just get your uh, opinion on a few things. Um, folks, we'll be back in a couple of minutes. Listen to our sponsors. But in the background, I want you to go ahead, get online, and uh, do a search on ClashDaily.com and check out all thing Doug Giles. This is Skip Corla on the Home Defense Show. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. This is Phoenix Corla on the Home Defense Show. Always use guns safely and wisely. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. This is Skip Coriel from the Home Defense Show, and I want to talk to you about keeping your kids safe around guns. I've never been a big fan of trigger locks, but I have to tell you, I have found a product called Child Safe One. It's a trigger blocker, not a trigger lock, and it works fantastic. I tried it out on my kids, and they could not get the Child Safe One off the training gun. I gave them five minutes. I sat there and I watched them, and they couldn't do it. Folks, I am satisfied, more than satisfied, that my kids are safe around Child Safe One. Here's the good thing about it. I can get that lock off the gun in under two seconds, but my kids can't even figure out how it works. Child Safe One is a win-win for everyone in the family. My wife's happy because she knows the guns are secure. My kids are happy because they're safe. And I'm happy because when the wolf comes a-knocking, I've got that gun cocked, locked, and ready to rock in less than two seconds. So go to GlobalGunSafety.com and get Child Safe One today. That's GlobalGunSafety.com. Check it out now and tell them the Home Defense Show sent you. Wouldn't it be wonderful if life was like the movies and the good guys always won? In today's world, if you're forced to use your firearm to protect yourself, you will need protection. Firearms Legal Protection is here for you. FLP provides you with seasoned, experienced attorneys that handle your criminal and civil matters as a result of you protecting yourself. FirearmsLegal.com provides its members with uncapped attorney's fees, bail bond protection, and coverage in all 50 states. We are not a reimbursement plan. You can access uncapped attorney's fees for as low as $10 a month. Firearms Legal members are provided with educational services, training videos, and access to our vast national attorney network. While you're protecting yourself, let Firearms Legal protect you. Listen up, folks. This is important. There are plenty of legal protection services out there, but none will protect you as well as Firearms Legal Protection. This is the one I use and the only one I recommend. Visit FirearmsLegal.com slash Midwest Tactical and protect your family now. All right, folks, welcome back to the Home Defense Show. This is your host, Skip Correa. We are speaking with Doug Giles from ClashDaily.com, the author of the new best-selling Amazon book, My Grandpa is a Patriotic Badass. And I just love that title, uh, Doug. Fantastic. I've got another quote for you right here from your book, Doug. Um, I'm going to just read it to you, and you give me your response. My grandpa says, Political correctness is a mode of speech that's often employed when one is trying not to offend a whiny pussy. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. All the listeners are probably thinking this guy's the devil, man. But um, <laughs> look, I I am a Christian, uh, even though I have the mouth of a stevedore, and some think I have the soul of a heretic. But I I am serious about my faith. And uh, however, I think that um, you know. Certain words, like the one you just mentioned, um, I think that it's kind of like an exclamation point. You know, you can say something and people are like, yeah, they, they yawn. But if you throw in, you know, those little uh, zingers in there, then it just sticks in their brain, you know, like, a, like some super glue knotted up in, in your hair. Uh, yeah, political correctness uh, is, is, uh, is tyrannical. Skip, you go off and, and you say something on Facebook. You attack a particular 
group, and we're talking about a tiny group that has fascistic uh, demands that you obey them, then uh, you could be off Facebook, you could be kicked off Twitter. Look what happened to Marsha Blackburn the other day when she ran a pro-life video that exposed Planned Parenthood selling baby parts. And this is indisputable. Mm -hmm. And uh, when she tried to upload it to the Twitter platform, boom, she didn't jump through their their stupid hoops, and they uh, rejected the video. And thankfully, Marsha, unlike a lot of Americans who curl up in the fetal position, suck their thumb and wet their diaper, she didn't take their crap, and uh, she did push back. And, and we hit it at ClashDaily.com. Other places uh, were, were hitting it, Twitter, too. And you know what? Twitter uh, put it back on. And so that's, that's, the, that's the kind of stuff that um, you know we're facing in the culture war. That's why there's got to be that righteous, rebellious uh, spirit, or, or we're going to have nothing. Because yeah. political correctness precedes always totalitarianism. And if people think that, you know, you and I are full of crap and we talk about this, not only great thinkers on the right and in the middle see this, but also great thinkers on the left see the, see the poison and the policing of speech and political correctness. And I think comedian John Cleese, who is no radical right-wing guy, I think he said it best when he said humor by its very nature is critical. And if you say there's a little special group of folks that you can't offend, then humor is gone. And then when humor is gone, there goes a sense of proportion. And when that vanishes, as far as uh, Cleese is concerned, you're living in Orwellian 1984. Yeah, I mean, you, you've got to have that humor, even if it's self-deprecating humor. I mean, so what? I mean, people are people are going to make fun of you sometimes, and you have to learn to to just laugh along with it. But these people on the far left, man, they don't they don't laugh at at anything. They don't have a sense of humor. Well, let me read you another one here. My grandpa says, if liberals in the NFL wish to be known as the people who protest our flag and our national anthem, I say, let them. Let them ride that crap train straight into a self-destructive political ditch. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big proponent of uh, watching the, the often arrested NFL players. You know, an NFL player is arrested every seven days. Oh, gosh. I mean, it's a, it's a veritable rogues gallery of thugs and hoodlums. And we're not talking about, you know, soft crimes. We're talking about uh, spousal abuse, beating their girlfriend, burglary. Who burglarizes somebody's house uh, when you're making ten million dollars a year? Uh, anyway, um, yeah, on the on the NFL, I'm a big proponent, man, of them protesting the flag, cops, and the national anthem, and I'm I'm hugely behind CNN and the DNC supporting them. And here's why: when they embraced <laughs> anti-flag, anti-anthem, and uh, anti-cop rhetoric, and they also embrace anti uh, God rhetoric in the DNC officially in 2012, to me, it, it, it solidifies and ensconces them into failure come the midterms and the general election, because America is not like that. Give them the rope, man. Let them hang themselves. <laughs> yeah, there's a polarization right now, a cultural, political polarization that, I mean, I'm 60 years old. I have never seen it like this before. It's just bizarre, but we've never had an America like this before. But, I, you know, I was speaking with uh, uh, Colonel Denny Gillum from Frontlines of Freedom, the, the host there, and uh, he was doing research on it for, for his show. And the stats that he had said that 50% of the NFL players had been convicted of uh, misdemeanors or felonies. And I thought, Holy crap! That's that's just uh... yeah. And that's that's who and that's who we're letting uh, ruin America's sport. That's who we're letting uh, drive uh, you know the the national conversation. And um, well, let, let me rephrase that. That's who wants to drive uh, the narrative. That's who wants to ruin America's sport. And uh, you know, I don't think uh, America is going to follow their lead, man. Looking, their the ratings are freaking tanking. They are the least liked sport in the United States. That's football, man. Uh, and that's that's changed since Kaepernick pulled his uh, stunt uh, last year. I think Rosie O'Donnell river dancing to extended cut of Riders on the Storm and Borat's thong is viewed more favorably than the NFL right now. And uh, I don't think Cadell's, um, you know, we're going to honor the flag. 
We're going to show respect. That's a money pinch, man. They have jumped the shark, and a lot of people that uh, read ClashDaily.com, they said we're never going to return to the NFL, and they're going to let that thing you know, die of attrition. Yeah, it could be the best thing that ever happened to soccer. But anyways, hey, you're... Yeah, and especially especially hockey, man, because you know the hockey players, even in Canada, when when uh, when one of our U.S. teams plays the uh, Canucks and stuff, and they play our national anthem, I don't know if you saw that video, but the um, the microphone went out on the girl that was sing- singing our national anthem, and the Canadians picked up where where the microphone cut off, and they did a resounding uh, chorus. <laughs> of our of our wonderful song uh unlike again the thuggish nfl players yeah well the thing the sad part and the scary part is these nfl players these are the role models for our young people that does not bode well for america's future at all um no and uh again that might be why you know jesus is allowing them to embrace stupid uh so that uh these thugs and hood rats who make millions playing a child's game don't become, you know, something that uh, any of our kids or grandkids aspire to be. So, again, I'm sitting back here drinking a beer, smoking a cigar, and and clapping for them. Do it. <laughs> well, you know, Doug, what would you say to the people who say, well, hey, you're, you're just a, a, a redneck racist? Well, I would tell them that our kids went to uh, black schools, predominantly black schools. I'd say probably 90% black schools in South Florida. My wife uh, taught at a low-income uh, middle school for 17 years, all black children. We got our kids black baby dolls because we didn't want them to be xenophobes growing up. I'm just pointing out the stats, man. If, uh, if people want to see their arrest records, see the crimes that they've committed, some of them murder. And uh, I'm an equal opportunity offender, so whether you've got black skin or brown skin or white skin or yellow or, or your polka dot or whatever – and you're peddling crap, and you're a bad example, and you're not uh, repentant and taking responsibility for it and uh, utilizing your influence for good, then uh, I feel a responsibility to crap in your throat. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, that's fantastic. All right, Doug, here, here's another one here. My grandpa says socialism is like a nude beach. It sounds great until you actually see it. This is one of my favorites, Doug. Talk about that one. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, you get snowflakes in the college classroom. Uh, the, the preponderance of, um, of college kids now think that socialism is, you know, this mono jovial worldview that just hasn't been given a, a fair shot yet. And, uh, and it's also it's a, it's a cousin communism. It just needs, you know, a proper place to roll it out. Well, they didn't get any world history. They got leftist radical policies coming through kindergarten and uh, elementary, middle school, and high school. So they're, they, they have no historical context to the brutalities that socialism and communism actually uh, create when they're unfurled in a culture. I mean, you look at some of the biggest uh, slaughterings of mankind in Nazi Germany, uh, Pol Pot in uh, Cambodia, and you got, what, Stalin in, mm-hmm. in Russia, millions die, bread lines, 40 miles long, Venezuela also completely collapsed, where uh, under socialism, the thing that everybody's trying to sell us on right now, you know, left uh, Venezuelans eating dogs that they're chasing down in the alleys. So, yeah, it sounds great, you know, kumbaya, light the candle, lump, sway and sing, you know, <laughs> can't we all be one? But at the end of the day, it's uh, capitalism that builds uh, great countries. And uh, I used to go fishing by this nude beach. We'd go out of uh, Hallover Inlet in North Miami Beach when I lived down there. And uh, it ain't a pretty sight. And neither <laughs> is uh, socialism when it's implemented. Yeah, I agree with you. All right, here, let's segue into uh, gun stuff here. My grandpa says little kids should play with toy guns and be trained at an early age to fight against terrorists and liberal anarchists who physically harm law-abiding citizens. Yeah, I can't wait my enemies get a hold of that one. You look at Islam, they're training their kids to kill us. You look at their death camps, and um, they don't have little fat camps where they hook up people on play dates, and, uh, and they play <laughs> whatever, whatever goofy games uh, kids play nowadays. They're handing these kids uh, machine guns, handing them machetes, and showing them how to decapitate and double-tap uh, you know, the infidels. 
Same thing with uh, the Antifa thugs. If people think that the, the leftist radicals that are rioting across our nation in particular in these places of liberal mayhem like UC Berkeley are innocent little protesters who just want a better United States, they need to watch some of the video that we got on ClashDaily.com where they're beating old ladies with skateboards, where they're smashing windows and they're walking around with clubs and their face covered. The kids uh, need to learn what Adam was supposed to learn in the garden, that if a snake approaches you and threatens you, sometime you need to take the snake out. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I agree with you. You know, Sarah and I, we, we homeschool our kids. I've got an 11-year-old. His name is Cedar. A fantastic little kid. But we've chosen to keep him out of public school, you know, primarily because I don't want him infected with all this liberal crap that that goes on, not just from the teachers, but from the students as well. Because as soon as you 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 send your kids out the door, it's like they are, you know, they come back swearing like like a drunken sailor. And you know, where'd you learn that, son? Oh, just some kid was saying it on the playground. It's like my son could not go to public school. He wouldn't last two hours. You know, some guy would push him. And and he'd take a swing at him right. or something, and he'd get he'd get kicked right out. So I tell parents all the time, uh, if you hate your kid, send him to public school. Yeah. Because they will they will uh, especially if he's a boy, they will uh, emasculate him. They'll try to drug or shame or ridicule his uh, testicular fortitude from him because uh, men they represent a threat to big government goons and to, to radical Islam. So they'll do whatever it takes to try to pussify him, which. You know, because you edited my book, Pussification. Yeah, and we should talk about that too. Pussification, the effeminization of the American male. That was your previous Amazon bestseller. That went all the way to, to number one. And, and it, what was that genre we, we, we put it in, Doug? Gosh, what was that? Um, it was it was like uh, gender studies. <laughs> gender studies, yeah. So up, so up there with uh, Caitlyn Jenner and uh, some of the freakiest books on the planet, there sat pussification at the number one spot, which, which made me glee and it made the snowflake scream, which oh, uh, yeah. made me um, <laughs> so very happy. I think it's funny to see uh, my grandpa's a patriotic badass hanging up there at number two right now. And you look at all the other uh, books for uh, grandparenting, and uh, <laughs> we stand out like a sore thumb, man. Yep. And, we, and look I... like a, we look like a we look like a fifteen year old Amish kid at a Beyonce concert <laughs> in that list. And I love it. Doug, uh, unfortunately, we're about out of time for this segment. But as always, you've been great entertainment and you've been knowledgeable as well. So so thanks for giving my listeners the benefit of all things uh, Doug Giles. Before you go, I tell people where they can go to get a hold of your, your new book, My Grandpa's a Patriotic Badass. Uh, the easiest place is uh, Amazon.com. Go over there and click your mouse, melt your plastic, and get my book, My Grandpa's a Patriotic Badass. Great stuff, not only for grandfathers. Skip, I think it's uh, premier fodder for the next generation. They'll get it. They'll laugh. And uh, hopefully, like I said, uh, they'll, their love for the country will deepen and their attitude to uh, not take crap from the purveyors of that stuff and uh, you know, pass this nation off to their kids better than they received it. All right. Well, Doug, thank you very much for being on the Home Defense Show. Thank you, Skip. Stay rowdy. Okay, folks, uh, I want you to head on out to Amazon.com right now, and let's see if we can take that number two, my grandpa's a patriotic badass, and let's turn it into number one in Amazon on grandparenting studies. All right. This is Skip Coriel on Home Defense Show. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. Welcome to my Dad's Home Defense Radio Show. You're going to love it. Hey, folks. This is Skip Coriel, host of the Home Defense Show. I want to tell you about my book, Civilian Combat, the Concealed Carry Book. More and more people across the country are seeing the dangers in society and deciding to carry concealed to protect themselves and their families. My new book lays it out step by step. It'll teach you how to protect and defend the ones you love. Get the benefit of 17 years of teaching experience and a lifetime of training for this important role in society and in your family. You can get Civilian Combat real easy. Just go to Amazon.com, search on Skip Coriel Civilian Combat, it'll pop right up there. Don't put it off any longer. Get Civilian Combat, the concealed carry book. 
by yours truly, Skip Coriel. This is Skip Coriel from the Home Defense Show, and I want you to have the very best handgun that money can buy. And that's why we recommend you visit Larry Jackson at Elite Firearms and Training. As a concealed carry instructor, I see people every week out on the range with guns they can't shoot properly because they didn't know what to buy. That will never happen at Elite Firearms and Training. Larry Jackson will personally fit you with your very own personal defense pistol. So call Larry Jackson today at 616-299-8715 or visit EliteFirearms.us. This is Colonel Danny Gillum. I host Frontlines of Freedom, a weekly syndicated two-hour military talk radio show. Indeed, the largest military talk radio show in the nation. You can hear us on weekends on broadcast radio or catch our show on the podcast that's available on our website, frontlinesoffreedom.com. Hear military and veteran news that you won't hear anywhere else and hear it on Frontlines of Freedom. Okay, folks, welcome back to the Home Defense Show. This is your host, Skip Coriel. This has been an awesome show. Uh, we're here with the wrap-up now. But Doug Giles in Segment 2 and Segment 3, the guy, he just has, what do I say, a unique, different way of saying things. I mean, he's saying the things that I'm thinking, but he, he's kind of Nugent-like. Um, he's more polite than Ted Nugent. Um, but it's just funny. I like the no-nonsense, uh, non-apologetic way he talks about guns and about home defense and about patriotism, the military, you know, the NFL players. Doug just says it in his own unique voice, and it's just awesome. Some people will listen to Doug and they go, are you sure he's a pastor? And go, yeah, yeah, he's an ordained minister. He used to have his own church. Now he runs ClashDaily.com full time. So, you know, <sighs> hold on. Yes, son. Would you like any ice cream? Um, right now I'm trying to record the video, the, the radio show. But why don't you give me a chocolate mint right here, okay? Okay. Just pretend I had it on the thing. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. When I come inside, I'll have another one, okay? Okay. All right. Love you, buddy. Love you, too. Bye-bye. Bye. Being out of the studio, sometimes you get unexpected visitors. That was my seven-year-old son, Phoenix, and he came out to offer me an ice cream cone. Of course, it was a fake ice cream cone made out of plastic, but that's what he's playing. <laughs> and so I was offered a fake ice cream cone. All right, back to Doug Giles. Go to ClashDaily.com and, and check this guy out. It's very, very politically incorrect. He won't apologize for that. I won't apologize for it either. I'm his, I'm his publisher. I stand behind what he does and the way he does it. So he's got a lot of good books, uh, you know, Raising Righteous and Rowdy Girls. He is just flat out balls to the wall, pro Second Amendment, pro hunting, pro God. It's just who he is, and that's what he does. What is going on in the world today? I don't know what's going to happen next. Okay, I, I really, really don't. I just know that as a family, you need to prepare for what's happening in the world these days. You look on the news and North Korea is just hell-bent on destroying America. I don't understand that, but I guess I don't understand insanity, and I really believe this guy's insane. You know, Kim Jong-un sane. I mean, he just is. He's crazy, evil, malicious, and very, very angry. And he is going to destroy us or certainly try to destroy us. You know, Doug and I, we were talking about, you know, raising raising boys. You know, we mentioned my son, Cedar. One of the things that I've noticed in our American culture right now is that there indeed has been an effeminization of the American male. And then I read another article just a few days ago about how the Army is lowering their standards to meet their recruitment quotas. 
that is not a good sign. That does not bode well for America. The military needs the best of the best. And the problem is we are in a society where we are raising effeminized males. You, you can't even call them men anymore. I mean, they're waxing their, their chest. Um, they're getting body piercings all over the place. They live in their mother's basement till they're 43 years old playing video games and surfing the internet. These are not warriors. We have a severe lack, a shortage of warriors in America these days. I think we need to not just have a conversation, but actually do something about it. Seriously consider how you're raising your children. Are you raising warriors or are you raising wimps? Be honest about it. What are your kids into? Do you even know your kids? Are you spending so much time working that you don't spend time with your kids? You have to spend time with your kids or you're basically, you're giving them to the government and saying, okay, raise my kids. Here's my tax money. Let me know when it's all done. I don't think you want to do that. I mean, Sarah and I, we did not take that approach and it costs us a lot of money to homeschool our kids. It really, really does. So go ahead and rethink that and let me know uh, what you think. Homeschooling is tough, but you know what? I do not subcontract out raising my kids to daycare providers and government education workers. I don't do that. And if you do that, you might regret it later on. Now, I don't judge people who choose that. I know there are a lot of people out there who are managing to do it, and they're doing a good job at raising their kids. If nothing else, spend more time with your kids. Take them out hunting. Take them out into the woods. Take them shooting, especially take your kids shooting. And teach them how to defend themselves. Teach them that it's okay to defend themselves. If you're raising your kids right, they'll probably be getting in trouble at school. Why do I say that? You know, if someone comes up and pushes your son or your daughter, they should expect to get decked right there. They should get punched right in the nose. Is that going to get them in trouble? Yeah. They're going to get sent to the office and they're going to be lectured on, well, this is the bully free zone. They should be able to respond to the principal and say, well, Mr. Snowflake, with all due respect to you, your position and it's to you as an individual, I'm not going to take that. If someone pushes me, I'll push them back. Will they get kicked out of school? Maybe they will. And then you can homeschool them anyways. Let's face it, folks. Our educational system is in trouble. Our culture is in trouble. We are turning out snowflakes who melt at the first sign of conflict. ISIS is not raising their kids the way we are raising our kids right now. Mexico is not raising snowflakes. No, you know, no third world country raises kids the way we do. We are pampered, we are doted on, we are spoiled rotten. America is in for some hard, tough times. And maybe that's the best thing that could happen to America right now. Maybe America needs hard times to get back to the basics of God, family, country. Before we were, God was, right? He created us, and he made the rules. So get back to the basics of God. You know, I know there's no perfect churches out there. You know, I once found a perfect church. I went to it, and they kicked me out. They said, hey, we're a perfect church. If we let you in, we wouldn't be perfect anymore. Yes, I'm joking. There is no perfect church. But there's no perfect human, and churches are made up of humans. Don't use that as an excuse to say, oh, I'm not going to go to church because they're all hypocrites. Well, yeah, of course they're all hypocrites. All humans are hypocrites. We're not perfect. That's the way that we are. So that's the God part. Get a relationship with God. Be in tune to what he wants, what his laws are. And I think we'll have a better society if we can get back to the basics of God, family, country. Family, I've already talked about that. Spend time with your kids. You cannot farm them out and expect a good result. You may not like how they turn out. Do you want your son living with you at age 43 in your basement? I don't think so. I certainly don't. I want my son and my daughters, 
I want them to go out there and conquer the world. I want to go out there, take names, and kick ass. I want them to change the world for the better. In order to do that, you have to invest time in that. That's why I allowed my son to interrupt me while I'm doing a radio show. Because my kids have access to me. They just do. And that's I, I love being self-employed because it allows me to set up my schedule around my family. God, family, country. This whole NFL anthem crap, I, I don't like it. I do not like it. Now, do they have the right to protest? Yes. Do they have the right to disrespect the flag? Yes, they do. I mean, a lot of Americans fought and died so that, so that these overpaid athletes, uh, spoiled, rotten athletes, many of them criminal athletes, can go ahead and disrespect our country and our flag. What a bunch of worthless pukes. That's right. I think they're worthless pukes. I don't respect Kaepernick or whatever the hell his name is. I don't, I don't even like him. I will not watch NFL football and watch cheerleaders and players take a knee to the, nath to the national anthem. If you want to protest, go ahead and protest. But don't make me watch it. Go out on a street corner and do it. If I had a job, these people are employees. They work for the owners. And to a certain regard, they work for the customers, right? NFL watchers, they are the customers. And the customers are saying, you better cut that crap out. We don't like it. We don't like watching you spoiled, rotten babies, you know, rich athletes disrespecting our flag and our country. Quite frankly, I don't agree with the whole concept of cops are going out and hunting black people and gunning them down. That's a load of crap. When you look at the stats, 80% of all homicides are committed by black people. 92% of those are black on black crime. So black people are killing each other. And where are they doing that? They're not doing it in the suburbs, folks. They're doing it in the inner city, which are mostly black. So yeah, when a cop pulls somebody over in, an, in the inner city, it's going to be a black person. He's not pulling them over because they're black. He's pulling them over because he works in the inner city. Should we just not pull over black people anymore? I do not believe that cops, the sheepdogs among us, are, are just, they go to work every day and say, man, I can't wait to get out there on the road and pull over black people and gun them down. That's a load of crap. And you people ought to be ashamed for even thinking that garbage. Okay. I should calm down now. But, hey, segment four. <laughs> this is the part where I tell you what I really think. And I really think you ought to buy uh, Doug Giles' book, my grandpa is a patriotic badass. You remember your grandpa? Or your, some of you, it would be your great-grandpa. They actually said what they were thinking, but we can't do that anymore because it's not politically correct. We have to temper everything that we say. And if, and if the, our words are not sanctioned or approved by the far left, and we say it anyways, we are demonized. I say the hell with that. You want to demonize me? Go ahead. I'll wear it like a badge of honor. But other people have to stand up and do the same thing. Do not let other people tell you what to think and what to say. Oh, boy. I am exhausted. I need a drink. I think I'm going to go ahead and have a Mountain Dew or Frappuccino, something else that, that's not healthy for me, just because I can. Folks, that about wraps it up for this week's episode of the Home Defense Show. Next week, we'll have more important stuff on home and family Defense, you can guess it is going to be patriotic. I guarantee you it will be politically incorrect, but it will be knowledgeable. It'll be helpful for you. Until next week, remember your purpose in life is to find something greater than yourself and serve it. Always remember God, family, country in that order. It's important how you live, but it's equally important how you die. Your family and the ones you love need your protection, so train, always train, stay alert, stay alive. Until next week on the Home Defense Show. This is your host, Skip Coriel. God bless you, God bless your family, and God bless America. Hoorah, Semper Fi. Thank you for joining us this week on The Home Defense Show. 
Now, get out there and protect the ones you love. We'll see you next week with more of the best in home defense. Bye-bye, boys. Have fun storming the castle.